But first up, finally, Australia had a good breaking news story this week. Uh, here's Nat with some amazing news. Yeah, this is breaking news, Koshi. Cleo Smith, the four-year-old girl missing in Outback WA, has been found. She is alive and she is well. Anyways, from one toddler coming home to another, petulant toddler who we wish would just stay away. In a matter of hours, Scott Morrison will be rubbing shoulders with fellow world leaders at the G20 summit in Rome. Yes, but as always, Joe Biden said he's in charge of the shoulder rubs. Yes, Scotty 747 was away at the G20 and COP26 UN climate talks this week and uh, oh, just look what a great reaction he got from the other world leaders. Scott Morrison has been given the cold shoulder during an awkward photo with world leaders at the G20 in Rome. At the G20, a not so happy family photo. A pair of presidents exchanging pleasantries with one Prime Minister feeling a bit left out. Scott Morrison looking around for someone anyone to talk to. Even his former finance minister, Matthias Cormann, not engaging. Geez, I haven't seen an Australian get snubbed like that in Europe since uh, Demi Im at Eurovision in 2016, who was robbed. Robbed, I tells ya. But maybe the reason everyone at the G20 snubbed Scott Morrison was the fact that he wasn't on board with one of their main agenda items. Some G20 members wanting to go even further, pushing to an end date on coal mining and coal-fired power stations. But the proposal was strongly opposed by several countries, including Australia, India, China and Russia. Yes, great to see Australia siding there with the modern progressive democracies of China, India and Russia. All right, so Morrison was against banning coal at the G20, but what policies was he in favour of? Prime Minister Scott Morrison used his address to the G20 summit to once again call for a thorough investigation into the origins of COVID-19. Scott Morrison will call on world leaders to help crack down on social media companies, arguing tech giants should expose anonymous users that abuse or defame others. Yes, while Trump might be gone from the world stage, he seems to be living on in our mini-Trump. 2.0. Yeah, while everyone else in the world is calling for the abolition of fossil fuels, vaccinating the poor and generally saving the world, our Prime Minister is like, investigate the China virus. Stop people on Twitter being mean to me. Jeez, this is the most embarrassing behaviour by an Australian PM at the G20 since uh, probably Tony Abbott used the forum in Brisbane in 2014 to whinge to other world leaders about how Aussies didn't want Medicare copays. It really happened. Here's a clip. Thank you, everyone. It's a, a real honour to have so many of you here in the beautiful city of Brisbane uh, for this first ever G20 leaders retreat. Uh, for a long time, most Australians who went to see uh, a doctor uh, have been seen at no charge. Uh, and we would like to see a $7 co-payment uh, for people who are going to see the doctor. Ah, remember the good old days when Tony Abbott lost the prime ministership over a $7 GP co-payment? Today, as Scott Morrison forgets to order vaccines during a global pandemic and is basically pouring fuel on the world as it's on fire and everyone in the Liberal Party is like, you're the best we've got. Stick around. Stick around, ScoMo. You're as good as it gets. Anyways, moving on from the G20 in Rome, next all the leaders continued on to the COP26 climate talks in Glasgow, where again, Scott Morrison pissed off the world by not committing to halve Australia's emissions by 2030. But he's resisting pressure to join the US and UK in slashing emissions by half by 2030 which some scientists say is needed to avoid a climate tipping point. The US and the UK are among two countries who want Australia to go harder, to join them in cutting emissions by half by 2030, yet Scott Morrison won't budge. Yeah, ScoMo was probably like, 2030? The consultants only just finished up that PowerPoint that said we were somehow miraculously going to have net zero by 2050. 2030 will require a whole new PowerPoint presentation. Then, of course, he pissed off the rest of the world by refusing to limit our animal farts. China and Russia, along with... With Australia refused to sign a pact to cut methane emissions by 30% by 2030. Energy Minister Angus Taylor says the only way Australia could achieve the target would be to reduce numbers of cattle and sheep. Yes, getting rid of some cattle and sheep. Well, that might help lower our methane, but I'm sure it's not going to impact the amount of bullshit we endure in this country because this government is always emitting a never-ending supply. 
So on to the leader's speeches, and I'll give you one guess what Scott Morrison uh, decided to emphasise at COP26. In his brief address to the conference, Scott Morrison pressed his case that technology is the path to net zero, but a week on the road with little sleep is taking a toll. The scene is set. Global momentum to tackle China, climate change is building. Yes, and you can read all about it in Australia's brand new white paper, A Global Momentum to Tackle China Climate Change. No, seriously, though, Morrison spoke of his big business embracing technology, not taxes, pathway to net zero like this. The challenge of combating climate change will be met the same way. And it will be met by those who, frankly, are largely not in this room. It will be our scientists, our technologists, our engineers, our entrepreneurs, our industrialists and our financiers. Or more realistically, our firefighters, our water bomber pilots, those guys who fill up the sandbags every time it floods, because with your commitments, things are only going to keep getting worse. And speaking of big business running the show, well, it looks like they definitely were at the Australian Pavilion in Glasgow. There was criticism of the Australian display in Glasgow because it dared to host Santos, a gas company, running a crucial project on carbon capture and storage. Even its stall inside the conference hall promotes the fossil fuel industry, including carbon capture and storage, sponsored by an oil and gas company. It's supported by mining companies, and they're the destroyers of the flavoured land. Geez, why is everyone so outraged by this? It's exactly like if I had Monsanto sponsor my stall at the organic farmers markets. Or if, you know, they had arms manufacturers sponsor the Invictus Games for injured athletes. Oh no, wait, that that's actually real. That actually that actually happens. <laughs> Look, I know this is all sounding very embarrassing for Australia, but thankfully we did commit to some positive pledges. Australia joined more than 100 countries in a promise to stop deforestation by the end of the decade. The commitment to end deforestation is a big achievement, but such promises have been made and broken before. Oh. Great, that's reassuring. Why don't we just commit to everything then? Um, then there was this. Australia will provide an additional $500 million in aid to its specific neighbours to help them deal with global warming. Australia is also an island state. It's a very big island, um, but it does give us, I think, in, in the Pacific, a very unique perspective. Yeah, $500 million for our Pacific neighbours to combat the effects of climate change. Kind of like a sorry we broke it, here you fix it kind of payment. Now, call me cynical, but I get the feeling Scott Morrison is only supporting the Pacific Islands just so he has places to go on holidays next bushfire season. He definitely cares about sea level rise when it could affect his favourite beachside tiki bar. Here's some money, build a seawall. I think the only increasing salination uh, Scott Morrison cares about is in his margaritas. And we haven't even got to the diplomatic fallout yet. Scott Morrison managed to piss off a lot of people while he was away, including our future head of state, Prince Charles, who he left waiting before barging in on him like a used car salesman with a deal he couldn't refuse. The first rule for the leader of a constitutional monarchy should be never keep a future king waiting. It's great to find your way around. Your Royal Highness. Yes, yes. An audience with Prince Charles, who quickly became the audience for a climate sales job. Now we've committed to net zero by 2050. Australia has done that here in COP26, doubled our climate finance commitments and we're working very close with our Pacific family with uh, Prime Minister Badingarama and the whole team, So, which I know you have a great affection for the Pacific. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 yeah, sure. I love Prince Charles at the end there, trying to get Morrison to sit down like he's had too many drinks. Said, sit down, mate. Just calm, just calm down. And then just before that, Prince Charles like acknowledges the camera, like he's like you both know that he's in the most embarrassing situation of his life, uh, and he's about to delve into a on-camera monologue like Ferris Bueller style. With uh, promised to battle armor and the whole team, so which I know you. Have. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. Prince Charles has never looked more uncomfortable in his life, and his brother is Prince Andrew. But of course, the big diplomatic stoush that dominated the headlines on ScoMo's trip was with the French. Relations between Australia and France have hit a new low, with the French president accusing Scott Morrison of lying over the cancelled $90 billion submarine deal. When we have respect, you have to be tool and you have to behave in line and consistently with this value. Do you think he lied to you? I don't think. I know. Ugh, wow. What a coincidence French President Emmanuel Macron happened to accidentally walk into a press pool of Australian journalists backstage at the highly secured G20 
conference. What are, what are the odds of that happening? And what was that? He accused our prime minister, Scott Morrison, of lying? How dare you, monsieur? Why, Scott Morrison wasn't about to have any part of that. Diplomatic crisis escalates. The prime minister hits back at the French president's slur. Slurs and sledges. That's how the Prime Minister has described the French President's verbal attack on him. Um, and the slurs that have been placed on Australia, not me. I've got broad shoulders. I can deal with that. But those slurs, I'm not going to cop sledging of Australia. Yes, slurs. You know, that highly offensive slur, the L word? Why, doesn't he know how offensive that slur is to liberal Australian Prime Ministers? And you know who loved using that slur against Scott Morrison was Malcolm Turnbull. Oh, he's lied to me on many occasions. I mean, there's quite a few examples in my book, but he's, Scott has always had a reputation for telling lies. All right, just to bring you up to speed on what's caused this uh, major diplomatic incident, well, maybe you remember that Australia basically de facto cancelled a French submarine contract back in September when it was announced that we would instead be going with uh, UK and American uh, nuclear subs under the new AUKUS alliance. Good evening. A powerful new military alliance has been formed, AUKUS. Australia, the United Kingdom and United States partnering to counter China's rise in the Pacific. Included in the deal, a fleet of nuclear submarines to be built in Adelaide. Well, President Macron of France has been pissed off at us ever since, saying they weren't given any notice. To which Scott Morrison says, of course you were. The PM insistent the president could have read between the lines when they dined at the Elysee Palace in June. I explained very clearly that the conventional submarine option was not going to meet Australia's interests. You told the French president that this deal was not going ahead. Is that what you said? No, I didn't say that. Yeah, that's right. Scott Morrison didn't just tell him it was cancelled. He expected him to read between the lines. But look, I do have to say I have sympathy for Morrison in this situation. We all know the pressures you're under on an awkward dinner date at a fancy French palace when you have to tell your date you're cancelling a $60 billion submarine contract and you're so nervous you just kind of tiptoe around it, hopefully they don't get offended. I mean, we've all been there, right? Clearly, you don't want to say it during the entree because they could storm off and the entire dinner would be ruined. But then if you say it during the main course, you might miss out on the dessert. And we all know how good the French are at desserts with their souffles and their creme brulees. You just, you just don't want to miss the dessert. So, it sounds like Scott Morrison didn't break the news, instead dropping a few hints while stuffing his face with delicious French food and then doing a runner back to Australia. Or as Scott Morrison calls it, diplomacy. So yes, Macron said Morrison lied. So Morrison, of course, himself went nuclear. The French row over submarines has followed the Prime Minister to Glasgow with leaked text messages and a staunch denial from Scott Morrison that he lied. Scott Morrison says that he was trying to organise a phone call with the French President to talk about the subs deal. Uh, The French President said he was unavailable at the suggested time. He then texted Scott Morrison saying, should I expect good news or bad news for our joint submarines ambitions? The release of the President's text we can presume is to show that Mr Macron knew the future of the submarine contract was in some doubt. Scott Morrison says he responded to the text saying he wanted to talk to the president in person but that Mr Macron didn't make time for the call because he believed the news was going to be bad. I would have preferred to have told him directly but that opportunity, um, that call wasn't offered. Ah, what a master of interpersonal relationships Scott Morrison is. First, he didn't give Macron the breakup news over dinner. Then he was like, let's speak on the phone. And then he just gave up and France didn't know it was over till AUKUS was announced. Scott Morrison is worse than a douchebag who dumps you via text. He's just like, well, if I can't get them on the phone, they'll just get the message it's over when they see me out and about with my new partners. And as for those leaked texts between Macron and Morrison that wound up in the Murdoch newspapers, well, I think it's pretty obvious where they came from. Did the leaked text message from Mr. Macron come from your office and has it made things worse? Well, I'll I'll just say again, um, I made very clear what the timeline was. Well, that couldn't be more obvious. It's a bit like uh, your partner saying, honey, did you eat all the ice cream? And you reply, well, let me say again, the timeline is very clear. I'm always acting in this household's best interest. And after the leak, Morrison himself doesn't even say he can be trusted anymore. Prime Minister, how can any world leader trust you or build a relationship with you if private correspondence is going to be leaked? I have outstanding relationships with so many leaders around the world and that's what I've been engaged with over the last couple of weeks as I've already addressed the point that you've made in earlier questions. 
Oh, my God, this wouldn't work in real relationships. Imagine if your partner was like, how can I trust you after you cheated on me? And your response was, well, I have outstanding relationships with so many women around the world. So anyways, in conclusion, it's been another completely disastrous world trip by our Prime Minister, where he managed to disappoint the entire world with our backwards climate policies, undermine and lose the trust of one of our most long-standing allies, unnecessarily irritate our biggest trading partner, annoy and confuse our future head of state, and even screw up everything so badly that old man Joe Biden threw Australia under the bus. US President Joe Biden apologising to the French president over the manner in which France learned it had lost a $90 billion submarine contract with Australia. I was under the impression that France had been informed long before that the deal was not going through. So anyways, you won't be surprised to learn that Sky News thought the trip went very well. And he's actually come out of this, I think, with some sort of dignity intact for Australia. And it's really interesting because you can tell how he's doing by just how angry Twitter is getting at him. Um, and you look at Twitter and The Guardian and places like that, and they're absolutely furious that he hasn't given away the farm on all of this. And when stopping off in Dubai on the way home, well, there was only one thing on Morrison's mind. But Scott Morrison says it's time for both countries to move on. It's important now that we all just move on, frankly. The claims were made and claims were refuted. What, what is needed now is for us to all just get on with it. So what are you going to do to try and repair this rift? I'm going to move on. Which is hopefully the same thing we all get to say when he's kicked out at the next election. It's important now that we all just move on. <laughs>